with you know a real shot to do something special, and it'll be up to the guys in the locker room whether we get it done. What are the things that uh, are like the top of your list of either concerns or to do list? What, what, what jumps well, out at you? It's always a to do list. Um, you know, I think. <coughs> To me, starting off with just making sure that everybody, you know, we get a camp going and that we, we continue to play the way I think that we need to play, which is push the, push the ball, get it up. Um, and emphasis on getting inside of Dwight more, I think Dwight's going to give us another option in the post, of course, he's doing very good down there. Um, trying to find the minutes where Carlos was very valuable to us in many different situations last year. Delfino, trying to find who's going to take those minutes, how are they going to fall, uh, how are they going to shape up. Um, you know, how much can we play over here and, uh, and, uh, and white together, um, you know, TJ and um, and, and um, Demo give us more of a classic, you know, type four. You know, can uh, can Omri play some of that small four? It's just a lot, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of it hinges around how you're going to take care of Carlos's 27, 28 minutes. And you played small ball with him in the four, so. Um, and then really just you know getting better defensively. I think that's one of our keys. I think White will help that immediately. I know that if you have. Uh, uh, Omir and Dwight on the floor, you have two from your, you know, uh, rim protectors. So, uh, you know, and then as, as we go, there's always, there, there will always be concerns that will come up, but uh, the, uh, off the top of my head, that's kind of... Colonel, you alluded to this in your opening remarks, but is this the most encouraged you've been for the Rockets roster since you've been the general manager here? Yeah, I think too. I think we, we have two you know, top ten players in the league, you know, they've got to continue to prove that, but, you know, both of them have played at extremely high levels, and, you know, you really, you know, the, the league really, you've got to have, you know, at least one, and it's great to have two like we have now who can play at an elite level, and then you got to have guys who can play a role and play it well around them, and, you know, you really never know going to see it and how it's going to gel, uh, but we definitely come in with, you know, um, you know, we're definitely not the going to be the favorite, nor should we prove it, nothing. Uh, but we've got, you know, players that if we can get them to gel and play the right way, you know, we give ourselves a shot to make some noise. Kevin, I know you've addressed this already, but specifically the, 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 the details of trying to figure out a way to have a guy who's a close score occupying spots in there. And so much you guys did last year was three points shooting penetration. How difficult of a challenge. Well, the penetration was to open up the perimeter. Now you're just penetrating. I mean, there's three ways to get the ball in the post or in the paint. You can dribble it in there, uh, you can pass it in there, or you can, you know, rebound it, offensive rebound in there. We want to get the ball in the paint every possession if we can. Um, and if we don't have, if we don't get the ball in the paint, we want to have bodies in the paint that collapses the defense. Like I think a great shot for us is Dwight over here gets out in front, sprints down the court, occupies the guard, the guard's got to pick him up because they all outran the big, the guard's protecting against the layup, and you have one of your good three-point shooters stepping into a three-pointer. Well, the ball didn't get in the paint, but body's got in the paint that collapsed the defense. So we want to collapse the defense with Dwight. It just gives you another chance to collapse the defense by throwing the ball into the paint, and he's a great offensive rebounder, so he'll get, he'll get, those are, you know, it may be look a little different. It won't be so much, you know, last year we had to penetrate the ball in the paint to kick it out and try to get stuff, but the, the essence of basketball hasn't changed at all. When the ball gets to the front of the rim, the defense is in full-fledged panic mode. You're either going to lay it in, or they're going to collapse on you, and you got to throw it out. So the object is to get on offensively is to get pressure on the front of the rim, whether that's rolling bigs, whether that's throwing the ball inside, whether that's dribble penetration. So I mean, it just it's it, as I've often said, it, your personnel drives a lot of how you play. You know, believe me. If we had a guy last year that we could you know, chuck the ball into on the post, if Kim Elijah was playing last year, we may have had a little air less dribble penetration. The ball would have got in differently, you know. And now we got Dwight, so the ball, you know, but that the essence of basketball doesn't change. It's kind of how you go about doing that process, change your personnel. I Getting mean, the ball in the front of the rim or bodies pressing the rim are huge. I mean, worked with Dwight and watched Dwight these last you know week and days. How is he physically? relative to where he was years ago, where he was last year, physically? Uh, I mean, he looks good. I, you know, it's hard for me you know, to start saying versus six years ago, seven years ago. I mean, I'm looking at the, he, he, looks, he looks quick. He looks strong. Uh, looks very fresh. He says he feels really good. Says, you know, the difference between last year and this year at this time is night and day. Um, our training staff did a total evaluation on him in July when we <coughs> signed him. 
gave him some specific stuff that they really felt he had to work on, and he did a great job of doing that. You know, just, just some strengthening and stretching through his through his um, lower back and his hips and stuff. And I, I think he looks fantastic. We had a really good workout. I was really lucky and uh, to be able to work out with him and uh, Hakeem, which was really a fun thing to do. Get a chance to spend a little more time around Elijah. And the only time I spent time around him was on the floor. Just <laughs> knowing each other very well that way. And. Uh, it was great. I thought Hakeem did a great job with Dwight, and I'm really excited that he'll be around helping him. And so it, it was a really good week up in Aspen. I worked well with Dwight here prior to that a couple of times. So I, I really, I really like what I see because James is such an excellent facilitator. Do you think having a secondary scoring option in the post really opens up his game even more than what we saw from last year? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I mean, uh, I, again, I, I, if we're going to have the type of success that we want to have, and then this goes for any team. You know, top players have to figure out how to play together. I mean, there, there is one ball, and uh, you know, so you have to share it. And I think, I think, I think, if you really just get into it and get into the whole team, it makes it easier on you. I mean, having another guy out there, it takes some pressure off you. There, there should be more space. When he drives, guys are just not as likely to leave um, uh, Dwight and just come over, you know, willy nilly and try to block shots and stuff. I mean, you know, and so it. It, it, it's embracing playing with other good players, and that's what any 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 championship team has done over the last since I've been in the league, last thirty some years. Is that they've embraced playing together, like you know, it, it, and put it, when they don't, it's like the two positive magnets go blank, and it doesn't work. Coach, what's, the, ex the, what's, what's the expectation will, will for, for Jeremy? Thing, right? I'm sorry. What's the expectation for Jeremy going to the season with all the new additions to the team? Uh, well, I think, you know, I, I, again, I've said this many times. <coughs> if people hadn't seen that month, five weeks in New York, mm -hmm. and that was Jeremy, and Jeremy was actually, truthfully, Jeremy's <coughs> first year of playing was last year. I mean, starting the season, playing 82 games, going through all the drudgery of back-to-backs and stuff, people would be saying, dang, that was a heck of a rookie year for the, you know, the yeah. kid. And he had a really very good year for us. I really thought he did. I think he'll be better. I think I think he, he had an opportunity to look at his game more realistically in the scope of 82 games, in the scope of being a starter, in the scope of not surprising people yeah. and everybody saying, okay, you know, when, once you kind of come out and and, 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 and hit him, mm -hmm. if you can only hit with your right hand and you hit him with the right, believe me, some guy's going to put his left hand up and say, punch me with your left hand, okay? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's all the, that, that's all the stuff that you've got to do. So he all of a sudden now start playing, people start playing him different, preparing for him differently. Now his is the next move on the chessboard for him, and he worked really hard this summer. He was up in Aspen, whenever it was, a few weeks ago, and uh, I thought he looked really good. I think he's, I think he's ready to go. Yeah, yeah, why does that mention that Akeem Olajuwon and Akeem is saying he's excited to see Omer and Dwight work together? And you mentioned before you're going to work together. How much? I mean, you just been... well, they'll determine how much. I'm not. De if it works really well, it'll be a lot. If it works like crap, it won't be much. I mean. So I don't know. I mean, we're gonna find out. I mean, you know, that's. Uh, but I, uh, we're gonna give it every opportunity to work, and you know. So, as always, like any question you ask me, the players dictate how much you play. If it sucks, I'm surely not gonna continue to do it. I mean, <laughs> and if it plays well, I think I'll try to do it more. I mean, I, I know that's complicated. But, but your expectation <laughs> is it's going to work. My expectation is I'm gonna give them every chance. They gotta make it work. I can't make it work. My expectation is to give them every opportunity to make it work. Yes. Kevin, Dwight has said that you're one of the many reasons that he came to town. Back in July when you guys were in L.A., how did you connect with him? And, you know, did you have a relationship with him beforehand? And just talk about the beginning to know you process. Yeah, you know, I mean, I didn't have a huge relationship with uh, Dwight beforehand. I mean, like, you know, I was in the media for a while. And covered, uh, I did a couple of playoff series when Dwight covered Orlando. Um, you know, I don't know. I sat down and talked to him. He's a, he's a really interesting guy, very outgoing. A big personality, tremendous athlete. You know, it, it's funny. I think he gets. I, he loves to play basketball. He really likes to play. Like after practice, he's playing Jeremy one on one. We're up in Aspen. You know, we put him through a lot of stuff. And it was funny because we were doing a lot of stuff. And I said to him, I said, okay, at the end of this run, I'm make you run sprints. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh. and I go, if you just said no, I'd have made you run him. But since you, he's willing to, he's willing to be coached. You know, what I mean, he's he's like. He likes to play. He likes to be on the floor. He likes to do that. So I, I, it, it just, um, you know, getting to know him has been, has, been, has been fun, and we'll get to know each other more. And it's my job to, you know, try, try to put him in positions to succeed. Can both of you talk about this summer the way the guys worked out together so much, and they wanted to be together, and how that helps leading into the season? Yeah, I've uh, 
take it for, I mean, uh, James organized workouts in LA. We had about 10 guys there, uh, which was uh, fantastic. Dwight organized stuff in Aspen, like uh, Coach talked about. Uh, Chandler was really involved. I mean, all the guys were very focused on improving. I mean, uh, I think obviously talk is cheap. So for me, I'm just like, let's 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 show it on the court here. But it won't be for lack of preparation that our guys don't <coughs> play well this year. Everyone, everyone really put a lot in this summer. More guys. You have, you have three guys at least, uh, Terrence, Sebo, Greg Smith, that are options at the four spot. So when you're evaluating them this month, what are the things that uh, you're looking for at, at the four position? You know, who, who helps the team play better? What, what's, you know, what lineups look the best? What lineups perform the best? What lineups in exhibition games? I mean, um, you know, yeah, I agree. Greg's another guy that we played. We started Greg on the four last year along with Omir. So, yeah, it gives us a lot of options, and, and you know, I would like to um, still be able to play small a little bit. So I'm trying to find that, you know, who, who can, can it be Omri? Can it be, you know, this Chandler play there? You know, who, who's it going to be? You know, is it Covington? Is it, is it, can someone play that spot? Who can body up on the other? You know, the other teams, when teams go small, even a lot of the spread for it, there's very few guys like Kevin Love which is going to beat you up on the offensive glass. You know what I mean? So you can play different people. So it's just a matter of finding that right guy. So I'm going to be looking at all those situations and. You know, really, what makes the team run the smoothest? Who's out there and who complements each other the best out there? You know, Coach, what excites you most about what you've seen over the summer? Ashton, sorry, Elder, yeah, what sorry. excites you most from what you've seen in the workouts this summer? Well, I, I just think the guys are, are excited to get going. I, I just think their, their enthusiasm and optimism excites me. But as Daryl said, you know, all that enthusiasm and optimism goes right up the window of the first game. you got to go play basketball. It's a long mm -hmm. season. I guarantee you we'll have parts of this season where we struggle. I've never been around a team uh, that didn't struggle at points throughout the season just because there's a, there's an odd time in the season like where three or four guys, that are your top guys, start, start, all start playing bad at the same time. The guys aren't making shots and you know, decision making. You're looking at three guys going like, why the hell would you throw that pass? You know, but I've done it as a player. You go through the periods. So I'm excited about all the optimism and stuff, but knowing that there's a reality to it of the grind of the season and all that. But I, I think they believe that together they'll find a way to get it done. And that, I, I think I think a belief in each other is a huge thing. When you when you believe that you can get it done, um, usually good things, you know, happen. On a personal level, Darryl, how, how excited are you just to see this pairing of Harden? How considering that we really didn't get a lot of opportunity to see, you know, Yao and Tracy playing the alpha level together. I mean I, it's very exciting. I mean I think if you go back, you know, just twelve months and you said, Hey, in, in a year you're gonna have you know, premier guy on the wing, a premier guy in the post. I, I thought they were crazy. I mean, we we obviously did a lot of preparation, a lot of teamwork about our staff, Coach McHale's staff, to put put our team in a situation where we have a chance to do and acquire the players we did. But you know, you need a lot of you need not only preparation, but you need opportunity. And, and we we got fortunate that. Uh, you know, both James and Dwight were available, and we had the right, you know, pieces or the right and the right money and the right sales pitch to get it done. But it, you know, haven't been in the league long now, as long as coach. I mean, it doesn't always line up like that. So the fact that it happened is very special. And you know, I think, you know, we're focused on winning now. I mean, everything's about all in right now. Um, we know firsthand in Houston that, you know, we had Yao Ming, we had Tracy McGrady, both very young. And that it looked like that run was going to be a long time. And your chances to be very good in this league, I think, are very special. And when you have them, you've got to focus 100% on, on getting as far as possible. So, you know, our young guys need to step up. You know, we're not all the way there. We're not a finished team. To Coach's point, he's going to be experimenting with different ways of making this work. <coughs> we're not a finished product, but we're, we're focused on we want to be great uh, come mid-April. Uh, and that's that's our focus. We need to get ourselves home court in the first round. That that's huge for having an advantage, and and then make sure that we're humming come mid-April with you know guys stepping up or uh, whatever is needed. You know, I'm going to help the coaching staff. Last question, guys. Kevin, you really established a great identity of playing fast last year. How do you balance that with wanting to play so much bigger at that time? Then your big guys got to run fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs>